Hey friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and today's video will ultimately be a comparison between a facsimile Noble deck with the uh, Il Menegello uh, Besançon tarot deck, which I featured in a few videos in recent weeks. However, before I do that, I was given some insight by a subscriber, Stephen Mangan, thank you Stephen, who made a few comments on my last video, which I think are very helpful and I would like to, to share the information with you in case some of you don't really ever read the comments. Now, the last video I did was a comparison between the Il Menegello Besançon, which had a few cards substituted. You know, so Il Menegello, when he created the deck, um, observed that there were a few missing cards and so he used other cards to fill the you know to, to, to fill the deck to complete the deck but the cards that the, the, those individual cards were not original to this particular deck so I wanted to point that out also <laughs> I always refer I, for some reason I don't know why I refer to best in song as like a Swiss style deck, but it really, Besançon is in France. It's influenced perhaps by Swiss makers, but it is definitely technically in France, you know, and they, uh, I guess it would be, yeah, it's definitely French. So I wanted to clarify that. As I was doing the video, I realized my mistake, but um, other people may have noticed it too. And I wanted to say, I, I understand it. The Krebs was the other one that I was using, and this is German, you know, I mean, I'm sure it is. <laughs> um, it is, it, you know, in the style of a Marseille deck, but Krebs, Ignaz Krebs was German. And I don't think, um, I don't think there's any discrepancy in calling this German. And then the Tarot of Marseille of Francois Chausson from 1736, and I have mentioned it in the last video and in other videos, that the plates say, or appear to say, 1672, but the date of the deck that this is copied from was printed in 1736. That's what the record seems to indicate. Now, it's an interesting thing because it shows or it suggests that the plates were created in 1672. So the deck existed in this fashion in 1672, which means that it's a very early style for TDM2, or it's the earliest one perhaps that we're aware of um, that was a style TDM2. Now remember, TDM1, TDM2 doesn't necessarily mean uh, years, you know, it just means what influenced the deck, but it was a TDM2 and the plates were created in 1672, which suggests um, that these plates were used for almost 100 years, right? Now, um, in reference to the comments that Stephen made, and they're excellent, and I do appreciate when people... Um, make me aware of things because I don't want to give out false information, right? My, uh, I'm, not a his, I'm not a proper historian. I don't have access to the museums. And, in fact, I'm so technologically stupid, <laughs> as you can tell that these videos are not very sophisticated, um, that I really don't know how to navigate, uh, like, museum things, you know, and I, I don't know how to navigate to in order to be a proper historian. My only uh, thing is that I collect the decks as I learn about them and I study them and I look at them and I make observations and I try to put together information that makes sense to me based on resources that I have, you know, mostly from other people's research. Now, some of the, my observations are my own. I clearly make my own observations and I think they've been helpful to people. I think I've come up with observations that other people haven't. Not necessarily that it's true, but just my own observations. But when somebody like knows more than me, then they point it out, I'm happy to share that information because it's important. Okay, so Stephen, I'm going to read his thing because uh, um, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. 
He says, hi, Marilyn. Thanks for the run through and comparison, referencing this last video I just did. Chaucer prints are circa 1734-36, which is accurate, or what I said, I think. Um, but if the woodblocks are from 1672, as I believe they are, the initials GS on the shield of the chariot are possibly those of Guillaume et Ceylon. I believe on the heart-shaped of the crabs, which I overlooked completely, but he believes that those initials um, have been removed and what appears to be small letters like P and C that are remaining are actually the tops of the removed letters A, G, and below them would be a Z for A, G, Zoya. Those on the Besançon of France, excuse me, those on the Besançon, F-I, of Francois Isnard of Strasbourg, France. But many Swiss decks were modeled on it. So many sw similarities with Swiss decks. Jurger was in Besançon, which is in France. He based his deck on that of Isnard. The judgment card of the Isnard is a replacement for a missing card by Il Manigello. The original, and I'm going to show it, The original card that was in this deck um, would not have had a banner, right? So this is a replacement card that Il Minigello put in. The original is much more like that of the Krebs and has no banner on the trumpet of the angel. So if you saw my previous video, this is just a little... Um, clarification on that. And sometimes I misspeak and I say things that, you know, as I'm doing it or after I do it, I realize I made the mistake, but I don't necessarily redo a video because, you know, I, I just don't. And I just hope you forgive me and recognize that sometimes I make mistakes. I'm not a perfect person, right? And I do have memory issues and sometimes I, I sometimes forget things. So cut me some slack on that, okay? All right, so I'm still going to stick with the best in song. I'm just going to do the, the, the triumph cards or the trump cards. And uh, I'm going to compare the Besançon with the um, Noble. And for the Noble, I'm going to use um, Marco Benedetti's uh, Noble deck, which I've compared it with um, facsimile decks like the Peterson. And uh, it's 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 really on, on spot. It's, it's really like a close facsimile, you know, as close as we can get. So I'm gonna compare those two. So let me flip the camera and get with it. Okay, so moving forward, if I ever say Besançon in reference Swiss, it's just that it's similar to Swiss, but Besançon really is in France. It may have been, you know, influenced by what was going on in Switzerland, but it's, it's really French. And of course, the Noble was created in Paris, which is definitely France. So we have a comparison here between the Noble and the Besançon. Now we have the tuft of grass between the legs. We have very similar thing with going on with this um, with this uh, full card. The name is a little different, Le Fauve, as opposed to Le Foul. Um, but the posture is the same. There's a cat or a creature nipping. A little bit of a different style, but it's still there. Um, we have a exposed derriere in the private. Um, here it's a little more vague. We have the same kind of configuration with the satchel, or almost. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's pretty much the same. And we're, we don't see the top of the headpiece of the Besançon, so we're not positive, you know, how similar they were, but the beard and the things are very similar. Okay, we have La Bachelier. 
We have the bag on the table in both. We have two sharp objects. We have, I don't know if we have dice on this table, but we do on this table. And the, I don't know exactly what the numbers read. I, I thought at one point they, I, I thought I saw they read eight, but I don't know if they do or not. Um, we have two cups. So there's some similarity of, of what's on the table. We do see three legs of the table rather than four. And again, a tuft of grass in between his legs. The hat is similar. The scalloped sleeves are similar. And I think um, Marco included another option for the magician. Oh, okay, because in the second one, he restored what was missing or what could have been missing. Who knows if it was or not. There's a lot of conversation about whether or not this is just supposed to be small. But um, perhaps it was a full wand, you know, and then Marco included that. Okay, I skipped number two of the best in song because, of course, it was... Um, Juno. So I'm going to skip the female Pope. Okay. So we have the um, Empress, and we see the winged chair backs, and we see the orb in her left hand, the, the scepter with the orb in her left hand, the shield in her right hand. The crowns are very similar. They both have this interesting thing on the chair. I think J.D. Michael, um, J.D. Uh, J.M. David, excuse me, J.M. David suggests that that could have been originally the tuft of a pillow um, that just got lost in translation through the years. I mean, there's some kind of like um, ornament from a pillow, but I don't know. Here we have the emperor looking in different directions. In this, we have the scepter in his right hand, and in this, we have the scepter in his left hand. Um, there's, you know, I've commented in the past that the scepter should pro properly be held in the right hand, but there are, I think Stephen also pointed out to me in another email, uh, in another message, that there are some prints and paintings of no, uh, people of nobility with the scepters in the other hands. When we see photographs, I think of modern day, it's in the right, but um, I'm not going to argue because I don't know. I, 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 it is my belief that it was proper in, in, to be held in the right hand, and that's the written um, descriptions that I've read, but certainly you'll if you do a Wikipedia search or whatever, you, you may see scepters being held in the left hand. Okay, we're going to skip the uh, Pope since um, they don't have that in common. We just look at this one anyway. We see the triple tier crown clearly. And uh, I don't know about the benediction. I guess the benediction would have been in the right, would have been done with the right hand, I, I, I guess. So the fact that his staff would have been held in the left hand may be accurate, but I don't know. Okay, we have our lovers with blindfold. And remember, the noble until recently, was considered to be the earliest known TDM um, that we knew of, and it is TDM one. And it, and since the, you know, since then, in recent weeks or months, um, it's been learned that there is an earlier TDM from sixteen, 
the 1630s. I forget the, jump, the, the creator's name. I forget the name. Um, so the noble has kind of been dethroned as the earliest. But there's, it, there's always, when we ever, whenever we talk about Dex being the earliest, it's like the earliest known, right? We can't speak with complete authority. Okay, so on the nameplate on the chariot, we have I-N here. But, you know, I is sometimes referencing a J, so that would be Jean Noble. And here, the F-I. Which um, I believe are uh, Francois Isnard, right? From the, the, the paper, Francois Isnard. Okay, so 20 is a replacement. Remember, um, it would not, the original, the, the card original to this deck would not have had. Lord have mercy. Sorry. I'm jumping the gun, I have it in the wrong order. My apologies. Okay, we have justice. They seem to have a similar awkward wing here on the back of that chair, which is interesting. The crowns are not similar. The hermit, although it faces, they face in the same direction, and although they both appear to hold a lantern, um, have different details. And, you know, like, you know, he's less colorful in here. He has, like, a scarf, and I think he had a scarf in the Krebs also, which was German. Notice that end of the walking sticks are different. And I think we saw that same end on um, either the Kreb or the, on the, I think on the Krebs, the same walking stick. Oh, let me review the other video to see. I think it was this, I didn't comment on it when I did the Hermit, but I think it was the same as in the Krebs. So we have on some of the cards and some of the decks, you know, this looks like a flame, but really it could be the tail of this, um, this individual that maybe was thought to be a flame or that the flame was thought to be a tail. Who knows? <laughs> but the wheels are both going in the same direction. The same type of hat. And the hands are very similarly touching the animal. Oh, this one's not in his mouth, whereas the noble, it looks like it might be in his mouth. In both, we have the 12 written this way, the name on the bottom as it should be, and the legs are crossed in the same configuration. Here, we have the fingers hanging, but here, the, we don't see that. In both the death cards, we have something on his head. And we see body parts and we see crowned individuals in the corners, uncrowned in the same corresponding spot. In the 
Besançon, however, we don't have a name. We just have the number, whereas in the Noble we see the name. Let me get these in order. So I had commented on the other video that the detail of the feathers seemed to have been copied between, I think, this one and the Krebs, but there's no similarity in how the wings are rendered in these two decks. We have the furry legs, or the hairy legs. And we don't have that here. We have a face in the belly, which we don't see here. Now here the distinction is that the whatever is occurring between the tower and the celestial arena it kind of looks like it's coming from above, right? And because we see the arrow even to further suggest that it's coming from above. Here there's ambiguity, but it really looks like the flames are coming from the tower and reaching up. They both have these background orbs suggesting that something significant is happening in the air and we both have individuals falling we have i guess a triple window it's a little different but we do have it they both have the aquarian star with eight stars This one does not have a tree on this side. It's got a little growth, but not a bona fide tree. And the jugs are held above the horizon line, whereas here, the horizon line is above the level of the jugs. I don't know if that matters, but it may be an indicator of, you know, where something was, you know, another deck that may have inspired. If, if, if they're copying details from one deck to another, um, they might copy, you know, just the general idea that a horizon line would be higher or lower. So I don't know if it's significant or not, but I'd like to point out things that I, as I see them. Okay, we have the moon frontal facing. So both of these, of course, I don't know if I failed to mention it, are TDM1 style. With both having the essential ingredients. However, we don't see the mist or the dew or the evaporation or whatever those are. We don't see them in the, in the moon card of the Besançon. And remember, three of these cards have been replaced in the, in the uh, Il Minigello, and this one being one of them, the, the, the Judgment card. Okay, here we have the sun with different wall structure in the background. Um, the Krebs, I believed, had the same wall structure in the background. So, you know, this deck, um, some of the cards, the three, three of the cards were not, um, 
were not original to the best and so on. I, I, you know what? I, I'll pull them out so we, I can show you which of the three cards would not have been original. And here we have the, the, the world card. Okay, let me pull the three cards from this deck, which were not original to the deck, and that El Menigello, you, you know, substituted three other cards. Let me pull them. Okay, so the interesting thing about the Best in Song deck is that um, we have marked on cards from the Suit of Cups, and in certain game play, in certain games that they might have played with the deck, they used an abbreviated deck, so perhaps they would not have had the 7, the 9, or the 10 in play in that particular game. So these three cards with the, in the original deck that um, Il Menigello used substituted these particular cards to stand in for the uh, Juno card, which is irrelevant to comparison, comparing the... Um, no blade too, because the no blade doesn't have Juno. But the deck original, the, the original Juno deck that was original to this deck would have had two peacocks, okay? The second card, which was substituted, was the 11th card, which the, the, the 10 of cups replaced this card, and, and Il Menigello found you know, another, you know, another 42 card that was suitable or close to, to complete the deck. So we chose this one. So comparing this with the original Noble, you know, may not be very helpful, right? Because this was not the, the card original to the deck. And then the last card which was substituted for something else was um, the number seven card was replacing the 20th card, which was the judgment card that I've already mentioned. So um, I believe that the card original to this deck would not have had a banner. I believe that's what my understanding is. So I hope this has clarified a few things or maybe it's made things a little more confusing. I hope not. <laughs> but for those of you who are really into it and, um, you know, I, I try to correct myself if I make mistakes and sometimes my mistakes are kind of obvious. Um, and then I just assume, I, I hope you recognize it and let it slide. You know, I, I, I don't just sit here all day and make videos. I just do them on the cuff and hopefully they are still helpful to you. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, friends, peace and stay well. Thank you for being here. Oh, and please share me, subscribe to me if you don't already. Um, share me with friends. I appreciate it. My channel could use the traction. Until next time, peace and stay well.